Hello all. Today we are going to see about medical entomology part two. Part one class has been already taken. So now we are going to move with part two. Myself, Dr. Praveen Raj, Assistant Professor, Department of Community Medicine, Slings, Puducherry. So what we are going to see. So under this topic, we have to know how to identify the given vector. Then the disease caused by those vectors and any specific characteristic that vector is going to have and what are all the control measures to the disease caused by the given vector. So these are the things we will be knowing. So these are the things that we have seen in last class itself. Again, I'm just brush up things. So what is medical entomology? It is study of arthropods of medical importance. And what are arthropods? They are invertebrate animals having an exoskeleton. They don't have a tibra, but they have exoskeleton. They have segmented body and bad jointed appendages will be seen. So these are arthropods. So these arthropods are again divided into class insecta, arachnida, and class crustacea. So these are the insecta, that is mosquito, flies, flies, fleas, and bugs. Arachnida will be thick mites, and crustacea are will be cyclops. So how to differentiate insecta, arachnida and crustacea? So that we have already seen here. We have to see body division, leg, antenna, wings, and where these species are found. So like if you see in insecta, body divisions will be head, thorax, and abdomen will be separately seen. Whereas in arachnida, cephalothorax will be seen, then abdomen will be seen. Same, same will be seen in crustacea. And legs, three pairs will be there in insecta, four pairs will be in arachnida, five pairs will be in crustacea. So these things we have already seen in the previous class. So now I will move on to today's topic. <clears throat> so what is this? What do you think? What is this? So we have two insects. We can say it is insect or insecta. Why? We are seeing three pairs of legs and we have head, thorax and abdomen. So what is this? So we found this is insecta. This is not looking like mosquito or flies or bugs. They don't have any wings. So what are this? These are lice. So how to know? One significant thing you can see in this lice. They are, you look at the limbs or else you look at the end of the limb, you will be seeing claw-shaped appearance, see, likewise, a claw-shaped appearance. So why these claws are useful? They are going to catch your hair. So while moving, they used to catch the hair, then they will start moving. So that is how we can able to identify this is uh, lice or louse. So here it is given male. On the left side, it is male. Right side, it is female. How to differentiate? So you have to see at the abdomen area, you will be having one single pointed structure. So this will be seen in male. If it is bifid, see here. In female, it is bifid. You are seeing bifid end. Whereas if it is single pointed end, that will be male. So this is how we can able to differentiate male and female lice. So basically we have three types of Lice. One is head louse, body louse, and pubic or crab louse. So head and body louse we are going to see now. Identification that we have already seen that it is insecta. So you have to uh, say about head, thorax, and abdomen. Then if you see thorax is for head shade and along with abdomen, which will be nine segments. Then last segment which will be bilobe in female and pointed in male that we have already seen. So here again you can see uh, if you see the body and head louse, it will be a little bit elongated, but pubic louse will be a little bit square shaped. And you can see the claws will be much bigger than body and head louse. And the pubic louse will be looking like a crab only. That is why it is called crab louse. In life cycle, if you see, 
it starts with egg or nits we say then nymph and adult so we have various species here with diseases here so epidemic typhus lapsing fever trench fever dermatitis these are the things passed by this lice again we are seeing the life cycle we have eggs and after seven days it is again becoming new then after again for seven days it is becoming mature larva so dissemination how it is going to transmit by direct close contact with infected or infested person and also in overcrowding we can able to see and workplace or play and sometimes people use their clothes or combs that will be indirect spread like clothing bedding combs and brushes used to by other person so there are two forms one is direct indirect form of transmission will be seen so this is one picture showing crab loves that we have already seen uh, these are dorsal ventrally flattened body both crab and uh, head and body uh, i mean all loves will be so here uh, the body will be square shaped body <coughs> and it will be just having large legs so legs are having claws uh, and uh, it appears as a crab that we have already seen all this point we have already seen again one more picture showing difference between head louse and pubic or crab louse so how to control we have to apply lotion of 0.5% malathion it is applied and kept for 12 hours 12 to 24 hours this is this is given for both head and pubic <coughs> then we can also use dust carburetor then 1% malathion it is used for body loss initially previously we are giving ddt but we are seeing some resistance in both ddt and linden also so for mass delousing again we can use dust carburetor that will be like 50 g per person we are using and one more main thing is personal hygiene the person who ever has infected all the family members in that family they have to properly take bath properly they have to uh, dry the clothes in the sunlight they should not use each others uh, properties or combs or clothes or towel everything should be separate so in that way we can able to this is the transmit you can have to stop the transmission of this is what is this we saw that lice they were dorsal ventrally flattened but this appears to be it is compressed from both the side as it is compressed from both the side so what it is this is a rat flea so this is also having three pairs of legs you can see head is there thorax and abdomen is there so one more thing you can see is you can see small hair like projection all over the body everywhere you can see this is bristles like the bristles that you have in your toothbrush same like that we have so these there are different varieties that we have uh, rat flea that is in oriental and temporal zone human fleas dog and cat fleas then can please I'm sorry so let's start with rat flea so the identification features they are bilaterally compressed and body covered with bristles they also have head thorax and abdomen then head bears piercing mouth part and thorax has three pair of long legs so these thing we have already seen and one more thing is abdomen has 10 segments if you see in male seventh abdominal segment will be having a sensory organ called pygidium okay the same uh, thing if you see in female they will be having spermatica there is one smart dark curved spot will be seen so that is used to store sperms so this will be seen in female fleas again we are having same uh, picture of a flea 
you can see mouth part when you can see the bristles everywhere and three pairs of legs you are seeing and three segments of legs then abdomen the same life cycle it will it will be starting as an egg larva pupa and adult the habits are both male and female suck blood so in this both male and female suck suck blood and they hop only they cannot fly they hop what are the other uh, arthropod that we have seen which will hop those are sand fly so sand fly is to live in cracks and crevices same like that rat fly also seen in cracks and crevices more of transmission of uh, this uh, rat fly one is by biting and mechanical transmission then feces so you can see bite of hungry blocked flea and partially blocked flea what is blocked flea first so this flea when they are going to uh, bite a person if suppose the person is infected with plague if suppose if he is going to have yersinia pestis so this fleas will suck those blood with yersinia pestis so when more accumulation of yersinia pestis is going to happen inside the gut that is stomach of the flea it is going to block the stomach of the flea so when it is going to block then the flea will become much more hungry because it won't have a needed amount of blood so it is going to bite vigorously so it will bite humans like uh, n number of times so whoever is going to come it will bite in that way whatever flea uh, yersinia pestis which is already present inside that flea it is going to get transmitted to all the humans who are going to come in contact with the flea so what is partially block to see the same yersinia pestis it is going to block it is not going to fully block the stomach small amount of gap will be there so through that gap the partially blocked flea will get its blood so it is going to live for longer time when compared to fully blocked flea that way if you see partially blocked flea are more dangerous than blocked flea because blocked flea will die soon but partially blocked flea will die little bit later and they are going to transmit the disease transmit the disease causing agent so that is why partially blocked flea are very dangerous mechanical transmission that, that we have already know that it's proboscis of the flea which had recently fed on a infected rodent so proboscis will be having or any other body parts also might be having the yersinia uh, pestis then through feces also it can able to transmit the disease so this transmitted are bubonic plague endemic typhus tuberculosis and control measures will be we have insecticides like like ddt dust and diazinon spray then malathion spray so repellent will be dietyl tolomide and rodent control measure also have to be taken so there is something like flea index so what is general flea index it is the average number of fleas of all species per rodent so in a single rodent how much average number of all species are seen so that will be the general flea index when if you see specific flea index then specifically we are going to see that particular species for example xenophysella c of 6 index and xenophysella a star index so these are the things uh we are going to see for specific flea index and percentage in incident of flea species it is the percentage of flea of each species found per rodent and rodent infestation rate it is the percentage of rodent infested with the various flea species so these are about the flea index that we have so that completes the flea now we are going to see about what are this we have two pictures here these are these are not insecta why 
because you can able to see there are four pairs of legs are already seen. So these are arachnida. So under arachnida we have ticks and mite. So these are ticks or mite. Oh, these are ticks. So but we have on left side we have one picture. On the right side we have another picture. But what are, what is the thing which is we are seeing on the left side? It is hard tick. The thing which is on the right side it is soft tick. How to differentiate hard and soft tick? You can able to see the head part. If you are if you can able to see the head part, then it will be hard tick. Soft tick you cannot able you cannot able to see the head part because it will be uh, seen inside. Like if you are going to uh, turn this flea. Then you can able to see the head. It will be present exactly here. So it is on the other side of the picture. So we cannot able to see the head in soft tick. So we have hard tick and soft tick. So how to identify? Hard tick can be oval body, no clear distinction of body features, four pairs of legs. No antenna <clears throat> and it is covered with sputum. Then head visible from above that we have already seen. So what is sputum? See, we can able to see on keratinized growth. Here also you can able to see it is seen all over the body in this picture. Whereas it is only seen in one third of the body in this picture. So if, what we are uh, actually seeing is female heart pick. In female heart pick, we, are, we can see only one third will be having sputum. Whereas in male, it will be seen on the entire body surface. So that is how we are going to differentiate male and female heart pick. So here again, you can able to see you can see that sputum is present all over the body. So this is male. Here, only one third of the body you can see sputum. This is female heart tick. So this is soft tick now. Why? See, if the head part is seen inside, it is not seen outside. Whereas here in heart tick, head part is seen outside. Whereas here it is seen inside the shell. So this is how we are going to differentiate soft tick and hard tick. So again, one more picture. So here that sputum is seen all over the body. Here it is seen only one third. So this is female hard tick. This is male hard tick. So what are the major differences we have? The sputum that we have already seen, then head will be situated at, situated at anterior end in hard tick. Then soft tick lies ventrally not seen from the above. This is one of the important differentiating feature and spiracles. So there are uh, respiratory holes in, that will be seen inside the heart tick. It will be situated in the fourth coxa where the in soft tick it will, it will be situated between third and fourth coxa. Then several hundreds of eggs will be laid whereas in soft, soft tick it will be 20 to 100 over a long period. So then we have in first stage there is one Whereas in soft tick, it will be five stages. In habit cannot stand star starvation. Whereas soft tick, they can stand star starvation for a year also. This is transmitted on. Under hard ticks, we have tick typhus, viral encephalitis, hemorrhages, fever, tularemia, tick paralysis, and human babesiosis. Whereas in soft tick, they have relapsing fever. Then other important species also, even here that we can see. So again, you have life cycle, egg, larva, nymph, and male. You can see this putum, this person all over the body. And this female is only one third. So what is this? This is something different from what we have seen. So here, here, this, here also we are seeing uh, four pairs of legs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four pairs of legs. But how it is differentiated from ticks, we can see 
two pairs are seen anteriorly and two pairs are seen posteriorly so this kind of arrangement if you are going to see in arachnida it is tactix so what are the other arachnida species we have mite so these are mite so if you see four pairs of leg where anterior four are anterior two pairs posterior two pairs are seen when they are mites in this picture you can easily see anterior two pair posterior two pair again here anterior two pair posterior two pair so first we will see about each mite so there will be globular body no demarcation into cephalothorax or abdomen four pairs of legs that we have already seen two front and two uh, at the posterior side the posterior part will be long and slender life cycle will be egg larva nymph and adult again one more picture the egg larva nymph and adult what are the disease caused by this mite it is going to cause scabies and scabies can lead to dermatitis due to secondary infection so what are the parts affected mostly the web, web spaces like hands wrist extremities are as like axilla buttock lower abdomen so it is given here so what do we call this circle and you can see in the molar aspect of hand and in pubic area so all those web spaces then the so it is forming a circle called circular fibra control measures so all the family member must be treated each and every person have to be treated in the family then before application of sarcopticides thorough scrub with soap and water should be given that soap and hot water should be given then we can use benzoyl benzoyl for the scabies then other mites we have those are promycolid mite we can also say it is spider like arthropod it is a vector of scrub typhus that we have seen so life cycle will be egg larva nymph and adult so this is going to look like a spider and this is a arachnida but what you are seeing we are seeing only three pairs of legs arachnida will be always having four pair pairs but only arachnida which is having three pairs of legs are pomicolid mite so here you can see this is insect with three pairs what it is it is a pubic louse but it will be looking exactly like a pomicolid mite but only difference is pomicolid mite doesn't have claws in the at the end at the end of the limbs and they are also a bit hairy whereas in pubic louse you have the prominent claws will be there to hold the hair so what are the control measure for both ticks and mite so sarcoptic scabies that is uh, which mite we have seen already but overall how to deal with this hard ticks and pomicolid mite so that is by insecticidal control we can use ddt malathion and linden in environmental control so we have to remove the cracks and crevices we have to just fill those cracks and crevices present in the uh, house or shed anywhere and third thing is protection of workers personal protective measure have to be given and repellents insecticide repellents everything has to be given for the workers then we have something called cese fly these are found in african uh, continent so attack generally the travelers what are the disease caused by this they are sleeping sickness or trypanosomiasis life cycle will be larva pupa and adult so this is a cese fly so control measures again insecticides like ddt and dial rain we are giving then we have to clear clear the vegetations and destruction of wild animals and genetic control that is that is by 
sterilized means the male that is under research. Then black fly. So it is a vector of oncocyte cases, which is found in the African, Mexican, Central and South American region. The size will be small, but things are comparatively large. So life cycle again, you can see egg, larva, pupa, and adults are seen. <coughs> This is black leg. Now we have another important, I mean, interesting, I mean, uh, arthropod. So this is not like what we have seen before. This is totally looking different. This is nothing but this is a, these are cyclops, and it is very easy to find. You can see two antennas they are present and body is present. And on either side, we have five pairs of legs or limbs. So this is like lungs. So they will be mostly seen in the water. It is a tiny arthropod, just visible to the trained eyes. And it has a pear shaped and semi-transparent body and two pairs of antenna and five pairs of legs that we have already seen. So it moves like a jerky movement, like, a, like if you see that uh, uh, jellyfish, same kind of jerky movement it is going to have. So it is going to cause dragonfliasis and uh, mostly seen in the step wells. Right? Then it is going to also take part in the fish type form diseases. Control measures that those are by straining and boiling the water. So if you boil it for 60 degrees, that will be enough for the uh, death of these organisms. Then chemical by chlorine and lime, then biological by barbel fish and gambusia fish. These are the things which are going to eat those small animals. The most satisfied and permanent method of controlling cyclopses drinking water is to be provided with five the water supply and tubers. So we have to abolish the step wells. So these are the, this is one example of step well that we have. Right now we are not using any step well. So one part of the class is over. Now we will go to insecticides. So what are insecticides? They are substances which are used to kill insects. And we are also having pesticides. What are they? Pesticide is general term included, includes insecticide, fungicide, herbicide, and rodenticide. So generally in insecticide, if you see, we have three classification. That is uh, contact poison, stomach poison, and fumigant. And this contact poison, we have uh, pyrethrum, DDT, and Linden and ring and stomach poison that is going to cause ingestion, uh, ingestion it is going to cause death. That, that will be a Paris green, then sodium chloride. Sulfur dioxide is used as fumigants. So here we can see that major classification. So insecticide are classified into contact poisons. Then we have natural and synthetic insecticide uh, contact poisons. Stomach poison and fumigant. So naturally, we have pyrethrum extract that we have. The mineral oil also it is natural. So these are the major classification that is given in the part that you have that you can see. So we will see one by one now. What is DDT? This dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. It is by uh, this Ziegler company. So what are the properties? It is white amorphous powder with mild unpleasant smell. It is insoluble in water, but dissolves organic solvents. And most active form is para, para isomer. Action, it's a contact poison. I mean, uh, it is going to affect the nervous system of the insects. Paralysis will be happening in wings and, wings and legs. Finally, it will be, I mean, it is going to cause death. It will take several hours to kill. So if you see, it is available as restful spray and also as dust. So under restful spray, they use 5% concentration. 
Doses will be 100 to 200 milligram per square foot area. Whereas as a dust, 5 to 10 percent concentration they are using uh, to kill the live sticks and flea. So most of majority of the arthropods are killed by DDT, but main problem is it is getting resistance nowadays. So at this end of the day, there are some adverse, adverse effects also seen. So this is DDT. Now we are seeing hexachlorocyclohexane or ben benzene hexachloride. So this is a white or chocolatey color with musky odor powder and uh, irritating to eyes, nose, and skin. Active form are the gamma isomer. So pure hexachlorocyclohexane uh, containing 99% of gamma isomer is called linden or gamma hexachlorocyclohexane. Action will be contact poison. And then residual action is shorter than DDT. Application is same as DDT. That means. So now we are going to see some argonophosphorus compound. That is malathion. So this is least toxic argonophosphorus compound. Yellow or clear brown liquid, which is unpleasant, which is having unpleasant smell. So this it, it is used as water dispersible powder in a 100 to 200 milligram per square foot rate. Then we have abate. This is most commonly used nowadays. Uh, it is also one OP component, Arona phosphorus compound. Brown issues liquid soluble in petroleum solvent. Due to its legs toxicity, it is used for the control of anaphylaxis larvas. Here we have malathion and here we have abet. See the larvas are already shown here. Then we have diazinone. It is also liquid volatile product uh, that kills us contact poison and also as a fumigant. It is effective against DDT resistance. Then we have Fentheon. So this is brown liquid with garlic smell. It is insol insoluble in water and it is as effective as DDT. So we are giving a residual spray with 100 milligram per square feet, which is like highly effective against Fulux. Then we have Propoxure. This is a carbamate insecticide and it is very much effective against anaphylis. So these are the insecticides which can be used in the place of DDT uh, because of uh, resistance we need DDT. And pyrethrum, it is vegetable extracted, I mean from the chrysanthemum flowers. So active principles are pyrethrin 1 and 2, then phenarins 1 and 2. They are nerve poison. They are going to cause nerve poison. The spray solution will be containing a 0.1 percentage of pyrethrin. So this we are we are using for a mosquito. That is adult mosquito control. We also have synthetic pyrethroids. That is 10 times more effective. Example the nostrin and propatrin. Mineral oils. Again, we are going to use it for larva. And uh, oils like kerosene and crude oil can be also be used. So it is going to suffocate the larva basically. It is going to form one thin membrane on the water surface. So larva is not able to take the oxygen from atmosphere. So they will die. Then we have Paris green. This is a copper aceto arsenate. Green microcrystalline powder soluble in ammonia and concentrated acids. So it contains 50% of arsenic oxide. It is also one stomach poison used, used against anaphylis larva. So these are about insecticide. So I, I hope you must have been understand, understood about all this arthropod, especially how to identify and what are the disease caused and what are the control measures. If you are knowing this, you can able to write your 
short answers in your exam and also you can write your spot test. Just we can conclude the session. Thank you.